Friday. Off the rails. You guys ready? <laughs> <laughs> hey, us. snap what out of what it. What about you? It's Friday. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Nick Kiprios, Justin Board, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandeo, Jen Rolnick with you for the next two hours. We get you teed up for a, a great weekend uh, where we get to kind of relax. Yeah. Late nights. Late night games. Yeah. The last couple nights have been late. Leafs on the West Coast, 10 yeah. o'clock. Not a huge fan. No. There was a point in my life where I was a night owl and I resisted the the bedtime thing and not anymore. No, nope, well, nope, can't th fight it. Those days are gone, man. I, and I'm happy they are. When I was younger, I loved these games. Yeah. I really did. And I still like if I didn't have to do a, you know, post game, an hour, not an hour, but half hour after the game, I'd probably even like it a little bit more. But it's just too late. <laughs> I just started at <laughs> you nine. Know, I do it in Vancouver at uh, four o'clock. Why can't yeah, we get puck yeah, drops? Yeah, do it at everywhere four. for yeah. the Leafs. Thank they you. matter the most, so just make it four o'clock everywhere. It's the Leafs hour. I agree. So when we started the show a couple of years ago, it was like, what time do we start? Like a one in the, in the afternoon, two? That's right, too. I, right? We were a one Remember that? Show. Yeah. And then they, they, we, yeah. Were two, we were never one. And now we were one to three, and then we were three to five. Now we're four to six. That's too late. <laughs> Hold on. We were one to three? We were one to three. We were one and then to we three. we were three to five. I don't remember one to three, boys. Wow, that's bad. No Gosh. recollection of that. <laughs> I don't think we no. We were always we were always three to five until this year. Voice. We got everybody watching and listening, going. I don't know what time it is right now. And nor Someone do I says, care. Uh, Fabro, if you're listening, I actually now <laughs> we're having the conversation. I think it was two to four, but anyway. Okay. Well, we're glad everybody's on board. Sportsnet five ninety, Sportsnet three sixty, Sportsnet Plus from four to six. YouTube, you can download us if you don't catch us live. And remember, especially. On Off the Rails Friday to text us mm -hmm. at 590-590 because we want to hear from you as we run out of gas and at about 140, 142. One? One? It's already our, our clocks are all scrambled <laughs> <No>. <laughs> here. You're, you're on Eastern. You're on uh, no, no. Pacific 142. Time. An hour and 42 oh, minutes of the show. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. We're good now. All we right. got energy now. <laughs> sure. Not but as much as the Toronto Maple Leafs had on back to back nights. What a hockey club. I. What, what a hockey team. I don't want to, you know, I'm not one of those guys yes, that says, are. let's go back to the tape. And uh, I said it. And Derek, find it for me. The Don Cherry? But I, I yeah, a little. <laughs> a little I, I'm going a little grapes right now on you guys. I You're told right, you they're not that far away from a, a big victory tonight. And, and people will be singing a different tune. And guess it. what? We got uh, Josh Cloak from The Athletic coming up in about, what, 25 minutes? And he's going to tell us how the, mo the, the trade mode has changed now. Mm -hmm. All in, baby, just like right? we've been saying. All in. We should have a show where we just go over things we said that are right. Since people remind us of the opposite. Yeah. Like, I said that Jake McKay might score 10 goals this year. I'm, you guys called me crazy. I'm scared they'll pull, up, they'll pull up the stuff that we got ah, wrong. I know, I know. That's the problem. Yeah, it's a big problem. <laughs> so, 7-3 win in Vegas. Yeah. And Sammy, everybody, the whole world, the whole our whole real Kipper and Born world, want to know like you've got a different feel today. I know you. What do you mean? They, they're sucking you back in. Do you believe? <laughs> last believe night was a stunning be? result. I stunning. you I left last night's show or left yeah. our show, and you said no. You they're going to lose tonight. I really thought they would. Like I just thought that it was a. A time where they were allowed to take the foot off the gas. And we know what they do when they have that chance. They oftentimes give us got we got, going on, got a party video going on over there. So, <laughs> anyway, um, they, uh, whenever they have a chance to kind of let them their foot off the gas and they have a little excuse to do it, they tend to love to do it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was going to be the case last night. And they come out and they play their best period of the year. The they just kicked yeah. the crap out of the Golden Knights. I yes, just did the not best see that goal coming. in the league this year by save percentage. Didn't see the end of the first period. Yeah. I didn't think it was a great start. No, they. Right? I thought Vegas had the first few minutes of play. I, I, I look back, and we're going to get into more specifics here, but a general com comment is that I thought they had, they didn't have a very good start in the first. They let in the early goal in the second, and then the third had a, a bad start too. So, mm -hmm. like, you end up winning 7-3, against the Stanley Cup champions on a night where, you know, 
three different occasions, you didn't get off to great starts. Yeah, it was that, Arizona really... too, right? Where they just like had the game won yeah. and then started the second. Yeah. They kind of let a team back in. They go, oh, we got to turn it on again. But nice they can turn it on again. Though. The moment Jake McCabe got that bounce, mm-hmm. the floodgates opened up. And then it was like this moment. Yeah. Do you think it's partially, do you think it's related to the lineup? To just being different structure, guys getting more opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 you yes. Do. Yes. Of course. Yeah. How could uh, it not be? Listen, I'm watching it and I'm watching Sheldon roll four lines. Yeah. And a lot of the times you couldn't tell the drop off. There's hard four checking, pucks to the net, goals. Yeah. From five different guys that didn't have the nameplate of Matthews or Nylander. It was good. Yeah. No, really refreshing. I actually, I'm interested in this Bertuzzi, Domi, Nylander line. I don't know if they defend well enough to use it in playoffs, but boy, do I like it in the regular season. I, I just creative, fast. I thought after the whistles, like, you know, Willie's got to get his face involved because those two other yeah. two guys are John at guys. I, a really fun line. I don't know how long it'll last, but I like it. I, we talked yesterday about how Bertuzzi hadn't really felt like he was gelling ever on this team. And for the last two games with those two guys, it does, like, not full gel, not full dippity do well, here, but it does feel like there has been moments where it feels like he belongs on a line finally. Until he somewhat puts a puck in the net. I mean, there's always going to be yeah. that hanging over yes. him. Like, there's not... We're never going to ever say he's he's good or he's, it's great now and it's finally there until he starts crossing the black disc over the yeah, red got, line. Got to push a couple into the net. He's got to he push does. a couple yeah. in the net. Uh, sorry to walk it back real quick. You had mentioned time on ice, and I'm just looking at the forwards. Marner played the most at 1911, yep. and Reeves played the least at 1240. Wow. Everyone was between the, that. 12 is... Might be the most minutes he's played. Yeah, Nylander played sixteen twenty-two. Tavares fourteen thirty-eight. Matthews eighteen. And those minutes. are good numbers if you can finish a game where the guys feel good, mm-hmm. and you're not asking three or four guys to play twenty-four, twenty-five minutes. That's a great sign for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, really good all around. Um, you know, Riley coming back, we were concerned that he might come back and everyone would look to him to do the work, but uh, I thought he looked great. He had a ton of jump. Like, mm-hmm. he just looked refreshed okay. in a positive way. Just, you know, we're talking about the minutia of this game. Yeah. But just to zoom out from it, it is hard to believe how much different this team looks right now than even a week ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Ottawa Senator fans probably won't like to hear this, but there is a real chance that, like... Is that the Garrett Rank line? You won't like to hear yeah, this? you won't like to hear this. <laughs> but there's a chance that Ridley Gregg being a hot shot saved the Leafs season. <laughs> I love this. It's yeah. that cross-check. I, they're yeah. playing harder. They look different. They're getting contributions from all throughout the lineup. They had to be forced into this. But they are a completely different-looking team than they have been before this. And it's just, what is the flashpoint moment that changed everything? It's... I I wouldn't I, – I, I get well, what you're saying. I'm just saying that it's way too early to – and you, you tell me what that means for you moving forward here, that they go yeah. on a tear the next 26 games. This, I wrote about this. This goes to a second means. round, a conference final. Like, tell tell – Tell me what this means to you, that moment that you just spoke of into success moving forward. That, you know, it's a team sport and there are certain things that happen over a long season that bring guys together and galvanize a group and make people care for each other. And, you know, Tavares and Marner both getting sick sick in the same game helped where they had to play Bobby McMahon more and it grew from there and all that kind of thing. But it just feels like that is a moment we'll look back on and listen – I just, I think they feel more confident playing these other guys in bigger roles than they ever have, and it's changed Keith's outlook. Well, listen, here's the biggest here, complaint we had for yeah. the whole year. They're playing the top guys too much, and finally they start to do it, and they start to play well. It just, it doesn't seem like a coincidence to me. No, we, we have complained, not complained, but noticed that there's team A and there's team B, right? That's been like a theme for our show. 
I, I think the number one theme of this year. I would 100% agree. That's been our number one theme. Yeah. It's like, how do you make Team B feel like a part of it? Be invested. Have some equity in this whole thing. And they have a moment where the team all agrees that they, you know, Riley stands up for them. They need to rise up together. All of a sudden, Team B gets some minutes. You know, Marner and Tavares are out. So all of a sudden, you're playing McMahon. You're playing Reeves. You're playing Holmberg. Yeah. Team B has had their stock elevated. They have been more a part yeah. of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, Austin, yeah, Math I, I, Austin Matthews having 10 goals I, I, in the last five I, games I, and Marner having... I do get what you're saying, and I'm okay with it, but it kind of kind of shake my head a little bit mm. because this is the way it should have been in September to October to November. Right. Okay. You're, you're okay, telling me it wasn't like you're, that. you're so, telling me that Sheldon and Brad and Brendan, they needed a five game suspension from their best defenseman and the flu. Yes. To I'm telling you find that. out how to put a, a contributing team of 20 guys together. That's what you're telling me. I'm telling you exactly that. <laughs> I, I said it last night on Leafs Talk. That okay. If, yeah. there, if there's one thing you're going to complain about, it's why did it take this long? Yes. <laughs> the, like the process versus yes. result. Yes. Yes. The process yes. versus result conversation here no, is a very fair what, one. What took so long? And yeah. why did it take your captain barbecuing a guy in the face of the stick to your make your... Make, oh, wow. <laughs> a captain. I don't know. That's a Freudian slip there, but yeah. uh, a guy that should be the captain hammers a guy into the boards, and why does it take that to change your whole outlook? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, be happy it's arrived. During if, this if in fact, it has arrived to stay, yeah. um, and that might be debatable from here on end, is what kind of look do the Leafs get off of this six-game winning streak, and can it be sustained, and is it in them, and who can continue to rise to the next level. A ton of questions, but for now, let's go to Sheldon Keefe on his thoughts last night in Las Vegas. Well, we got we got through the first uh, few minutes where, you know, they were really uh, coming at us there, but um, <clears throat> I thought once we really kind of adjusted to the game, you know, it's, it's a good team over there, quite obviously, and, and they play at a high level, they compete at a high level, so it demands demands more uh, of the group and we talked about that coming into the game it's one thing to talk about it's something to get on the ice and kind of feel your way through that so I thought once we adjusted to that uh, we really started to come and we started to skate really well and uh, this team probably more so than any in the league makes it hard to get to their net uh, so we we had to really be committed you know to getting to that space and I thought we did a really good job of it. Every single line did a really good job. Our defense contributed uh, just getting to the net and stressing their goaltender. So that allowed us to really get going in the game. I mean, same uh, same sort of song and dance from him that we have to say, right? I mean, it's it took him a little while to get going, but looked really good. We've got him on a number of things, contributions from the depth and Morgan Riley, which I want to hear both of those. Is there a direction you want to go next? No, I'm good. All right. Lead let, us. Yeah, let's, uh, let, let's talk about contributions from the depth and we can do even Domi after that. Let's start with clip two though. Yeah, it's been it's been great. I mean felt like our our depth could be a real factor here today. Obviously they're short handed uh, up front missing four forwards. So that's that takes a significant uh, chunk out of their out of their depth. So you had a pretty good feeling that if our guys could get going that they'd have a, a good chance to make a real impact on in the game here tonight. Uh, and that's how it's worked out. But obviously, you know, for a game like this against a team like that, to to have those guys contributing uh, on different lines uh, and have our, you know, the camp line have the type of night that they did, uh, really, really good for our team. Yeah, and I and I really feel like I don't know how sustainable it is, Kip, for them to continue to look this way. But John Tavares playing third line center. Yeah is it gives you a threat in the bottom six that you haven't had. And it really seems to have given some life to the guys that you're playing yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, I, and we spoke about this yesterday in our show. I think he's handled it really well. And mm -hmm. I probably would imagine that this is the first time in his life, and I'll go back to the moment that he first put on skates, yeah. that he's been dis demoted or, you know, told that, you no longer are 
considered our top centerman mm-hmm. or top two centerman at this point. And it can go two ways with him. And so far, he's been an absolute pro about it. Yeah. And I, and I, I, I can see, you can see that there's a sense of urgency in his, For sure. in his play too. Like he is working his ass off out there and it's just not a given that you're going to, you're going to be rolled out in all the key situations anymore. And there's a sense of urgency in his game, which I also like. It just feels like you've been fighting it as the Toronto Maple Leafs fighting it to make it like we're paying this guy 11 million bucks. So he's at least the second line center. And we need to force this sort of square peg into the round hole. And it feels like the second they said, maybe that's just not the best fit at this point. And they were a little bit more honest with his usage. He's responded really well. And yeah, yeah, everything just seems to slot in a little bit better. Between Matthews and and Tavares for three quarters of the season, it's Max Domi at 10 minutes, 11 minutes, Mm -hmm. 9 minutes, 10 minutes. It's like... It's not, it's not going to work. You got to change something up. Yeah. And so Domi plays like 15 minutes last night, gets his opportunity with Nylander and Bertuzzi. Um, two goals, five shots in that time. I mean, almost seems a little bit rejuvenated here midseason. Uh, let's listen to Sheldon clip four on Max Domi. No, he's been great. He's been, he's been working. You know, today he scores great goals for us, but he's also like his his – his checking defensively coming back and tracking and getting back above the puck and using his speed and tenacity to close uh, and kill plays uh, defensively, I, I think is, has been tremendous. And that's what's going to allow him to continue to play a role in a situation like that. And where when he's skating and competing at that level, he could play against anybody in the league. And, and we've seen that what he can contribute offensively, whether it's scoring like he has tonight or, or making plays and, and uh, facilitating for others. And that, I think, was also a big concern over the season was um, defensively for, for Max. Yeah. And yeah. if he can keep it simple and make the high percentage plays, right? Yeah. Well, then, yeah, the high percentage plays is good. I'd like to see him doing that. Yeah. What worries me is that defensive stuff when you get in the playoffs against a good team, because like you, it's always, okay, how does this translate to a first-round series against the Bruins and Charlie yeah. Coyle, who's their second-line center or mm-hmm. whatever, you know? And it's it's a bigger ask for sure. He scored a gorgeous goal last night, Charlie Coyle. Coyle. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean. Backhand talk, beautiful. Good player, big guy. Yeah. You know, and so you're trying to picture how that, that works. Can, but either way, can good, I, good, uh, good sign. Yeah, yeah. Domi's speed is something that I feel like is an under talked or underappreciated is maybe the wrong word, but under talked about thing with this team because I feel like it's a pretty slow team in general. Like Not when you the it doesn't feel like they are, you know, a bunch of burners. But it was nice to see him show off that speed when I don't know what happened at the blue line. But both guys were like, I forgot what to do with the puck. Yeah, it's it a lazy a, fly ball. You got it. Yeah, I got yeah. it. You got it. it I got it. it. Dropped, it. Nobody's it hit, got it. It hit the grass yeah. and and Domi took advantage, made a nice finish. But you really got to see his speed there. It's a, it's a nice thing for and them a to nice have. nice finish. Really nice thing. I will say, though, the first one, it does speak to, like, I still feel like he has a lack of offensive confidence, like that he catches that one and he holds it for yeah. so long and he bangs it into the goalie. He gets it back and he's trying to pass that to Bertuzzi, right? He's trying mm-hmm. to... So, like, he ends up getting a bounce and getting, okay, I got one and feeling good. I think it's great that he went out and scored again after that because he even said after the game, like... You know, I, I think he said something like, I could have one time that one, you know, give myself yeah. a better chance at it. You know, so, he say froze, he say his, you know, or something. Oh, his controller so, froze, yeah. So there's something, we also have a Domi clip, a surprise clip. Oh. I didn't put this one, I just saw it right before it was coming on air, so I got it. But he got asked after the game about what he thought of Matthew's Selkie candidacy, candidacy. Mm-hmm. and I thought you guys would really like the answer that he gave. If you want to play that clip, Derek. Let's do it. He deserves to be in the Selkie conversation as well. Do, do you agree with that? What do you say? We do not care about those kind of awards. It's irrelevant. We're worried about one thing, one thing only. So we'll focus on that. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. The, I'm just looking right now. Uh, great answer. It right? is. Yeah, it's, great it's, answer. Yeah, I feel like that's not an answer that has been given on this team a lot. Feels like a lot of people would just kind of wax poetic about it. And I've have you ever heard a guy say that? <laughs> yeah. I'm scrambling to find the article it's in, but Jake McCabe was not asked about uh, Matthews in his Selkie, but he's asked about Matthews, and he said, I think he deserves to be talked about in the Selkie conversation. He basically said the opposite. 
unprompted oh, went on to talk went, about Matthews as how why oh, he should okay. be in the Selkie conversation. Well, it might be Luke Fox's article in Sports Center. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, well, I just thought that was an interesting answer, kind of off off uh, brand for them to right. say that. But anyways, that's good. Listen, uh, it's a team answer. Be, you got twenty two guys on the roster. There's a very good chance you're going to get. <laughs> 22 different opinions sometimes but yeah i i think max max's comment is is a nice reminder to the players as well mm -hmm. that we're all failures if we're out in the first or go yeah, away quietly in the second the round again the rocket the ted Lindsay and the yeah. selkie and, and no one's the gonna round. no one's gonna give a crap mccabe said he should be in the selkie conversation too frankly i mean the guy's stick is unbelievable he's super responsive just, I mean, it's a whole it's it's the one they were trying to get don't oh, so he so it. basically McCabe said it, yeah. and then Luke's like, "That's a good angle. I'm gonna go ask Max about it," <laughs> and then got an even better answer. <laughs> yeah. Luke Fox, what a reporter! He's the what guy. a reporter. He's the so, I mean, there's a lot of different places you want to go. You want to do Morgan Riley before we take a, 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 a just a, a blanket feel of of this lineup moving forward. Do you want to hear Bruce Cassidy call the Leafs men against boys? Yes. Yeah. Let's do the Bruce Cassidy clip. It looked like men against boys there for a stretch of about 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, whatever it was. And, and then certainly tried to battle back, but we didn't execute well enough to do that. And not often you get that, the Leafs I, called that yeah. against the that's top contender. It, that's why I put it in there. Yeah. I think that's the first time ever. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I don't think they're, they're exactly he's happy with the, the stretch. I think they've lost four out of five now. Yeah, four, yeah. four in a row at home. Four in a row at home. And the, team, the game they won, they beat San Jose. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, so they're struggling. I think that's a comment that he wants to send a bigger message over the course of probably week and a half, mm -hmm. two weeks. Yeah. Were you saying you want to do uh, Morgan time? Riley? You okay? Like, he, it's nice that he doesn't have to feel like he, he uh, disrupted uh, a good thing going for the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's also that, that, that feel that they had to keep Brody on the left side, so they yeah. put him with, uh, uh, who was he with last Legson. night? Legison last night, mm -hmm. which at the end of the day, you don't really think that's a, a pair you're going to start in the first round of the playoffs, but no. it's kind of interesting that your best defenseman would have a feel of uh, a third-pairing guy. He played three minutes less than Timothy Lilligren last night. Riley played like 18.30 to yeah. Lilligren's 21.30. Yeah, but Lilligren's skating right now, and he's feeling it, yeah. and Sheldon wants to roll with him a little bit here. I, you know, that was part of my article today when you're looking for things out of this break that, like, what can you take into the playoffs? I can see this version of Lilligren in playoffs. I can see him where he's, you know, defending Cooley off the rush in Arizona, a guy who skates really well, you know, going back on pucks and skating it out of the end. He looks like a guy they could play. They haven't played him in playoffs much at all. Yeah. I think maybe Lilligan playing that much. How much did Brody play? 20. I think. Um, well, 22. He, he, he's oh, had a huge turnaround here. I think here. the I coach think... loves playing him on the left side. Yeah. And there, he seems to be the most trusted guy. He's something like plus 14 in the last couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, seven or games, something. one goal against 14-4. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Uh... No wonder he's playing him so much. Yeah. That's huge for them. I mean, getting him into a better place. So, and that was part of the article too. I can see now, okay, you had Chris Tanev and you do Riley Tanev. Yes. You know, Brody Lilligren, McKay Benoit. You pretty good. I mean, absolutely need a right handed top four guy for Morgan Riley. Like, I think it's you need a must. specifically. Is there I can't any see out there? anyone who is like him, who's available, who kills penalties. Oh, little 680 <laughs> news traffic. Oh. You want me to do a helicopter sound? <laughs> yeah. But I was thinking, like, end of game, you're up a goal, you're trying to protect a lead. Luke Shen had been out there last year in those moments. Brody had been reliable. Yeah. Like, you don't really have a ton yeah. of those guys. Someone like Tanev who's blocking shots. God, it would make you feel good in those moments, wouldn't it? Yeah. You, you add Tanev to the way this team's playing right now, and it's a long time before the playoffs here. So that has to be said that, you know, there's an argument to be made about peaking at the wrong time and getting hot at the wrong time. But as presently constituted, you, just, add, you add Tanev to this. It just doesn't sound like it's going to happen. It's going to happen. What? Yeah. No. Don't uh, I, someone told me the other day, Leafs are on the outside looking in on, on Tanev. They're, they're not 
They're not close with the contenders right now. So unwilling the, to part with the first. I hope that's not the case. I don't know whether it's that or not. And I don't know. No one's told me specifically. I've got I've got no basis other than a feel that Calgary may be still a little touchy on tree. Tree. Mm. Red tree living. Yeah, and okay. Zadorov was a guy that was talked about a lot. There I was, tell you, I'm glad that didn't work. There was a sense that uh, Calgary was a lot happier to deal with Vancouver than they would have uh, yeah. back with uh, Toronto when that deal went down. Mm-hmm. So they can, I, they'll never say it, but the, they, I'm sure they feel you it. You okay giving up a first for Chris Tanev? I am. My answer is different than a week ago. Well, I will say... Assuming he he'd resign here, which you know he lives nearby, he you know Toronto guy. I think that would be a, a given. Yeah, that would be a given that you have to get him down on a three or four year deal. Yeah, and I think for a first that that works for me because the first isn't you know tenth or even twentieth. It might be twenty fifth or something. You know, is that enough right now when you think about this Leaf D, Kristanov? It's enough barring everyone playing well and staying healthy. <laughs> it, it, you know, the no, second you no, need one, no, well, no, that's, no. that has Jordan on the outside. If they win the, the Stanley Cup, yes, it will be enough. No, but I'm saying if they have an injury, it's Jordano in, right? You know, or Benoit yeah. in, whatever. But so you're still okay, but... Gio can still be there as a depth guy. Absolutely. But they get slower with Gio on that blue line. Yeah, but significantly. Tim Resnick is might be, you know, not as slow, right? Like he played, what, 80 games last yeah. year? I don't know, and played a lot of minutes. I, yes, and ran out of gas yeah. quickly. Yeah. That's, I think, what you, your ideal scenario for him is a guy that you can mix in for a game or two in the playoffs sort of thing. Putting, yeah, Jordano right? in a game, you feel fine so, about it. So, I, yeah, I think Tanev and then one more sort of depth type guy. Uh, the other thing better? I want, though, is a guy that kind of takes Domi out of that 2C spot, okay. which is, okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah. I, I want to save that for okay. because that's the big picture right now. Okay. But before that, why don't we go to Sheldon Keefe and just talk and, and hear him on his description of where the team is uh, compared to uh, the rest of the season so far. Yeah, I think that's fair, you know. Um yeah, I think especially with the consistency, right? We've been talking about consistency being the difference. We've played good hockey as a, over over the course of the season, you know, but but we haven't put together a stretch like this. So that's what's been been tremendous. Obviously, the response of uh, you know losing Morgan as we did, and then you know the the illness and injuries and things that we've been dealing with. Um, the guys haven't been phased. They've just been growing their game. Uh, one one game at a time, like tonight's game, we felt was going to require more than what we what we've been doing in, in previous games. We had to be even better, and I thought that we were. So that was great. There you go. Good vibes all around. Have they been as good earlier in the year as they are now? No, no, because I don't see that. No, they may have won. They've won a lot of games just on their skill and talent, and you know they've. Think back to some of those games that came back in the last minute and got well, it to overtime. But this is the best day of the look. I mean, Kip has beaten up the story for a while that they didn't win in regulation. They yeah. won five of their last six yeah. in regulation yeah. and yeah. running away with it. Keith complained for a while they couldn't pull away from a game. Yeah. They've won by, what was it, four last night, three the other night. Like, they're mm-hmm. handling seven, their business. Seven against the Ducks. Plus 20 uh, goal differential in the last six games. So we got Joshua Cloak uh, in a few minutes here, and he's going to talk about... Uh, the Leafs' approach to the trade deadline and how significant has it changed over the course of maybe six games. So I will go back to you before I rudely interrupted no, no, you no, no. on Max Domi in the second spot, uh, the third line now that looks like Tavares, McMahon, and Robertson, and Camp, and Holmberg. And yeah. wh- where is this lineup for you playing like they did last night going into a, a first or second round with the potential of p- facing a Florida Panther team. Yeah, if you check my, uh, or sportsnet.ca, my article is up now <clears throat> where I talk about some potential lines. Tavares playing 3C to me. If you, Yarncroc will be back. So if you did McMahon, Tavares, Yarncroc, don't you like that? Doesn't that, 
sound like a good third line? I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. like I'm that's okay a pretty good group that's to a, me. That's a checking line. Uh, you know, can can they get their noses dirty every once in a while? Because that is a yeah. big thing in the playoffs. Is your third line has to have a little bit of that snot. Mm-hmm. So, I think they've got 25 games to prove that they can take that kind of edge to another level. But I. I I don't mind it for now, based on Bobby McMahon's confidence and size, skating. Yeah, lean. You know, he can lean on people. He can, but let's say it were like even Nyes, Tavares, Yarncroc, and it weren't like a super heavy checking line or something, and you did McMahon, Camp, Holmberg as a fourth line. That you know yeah. line could lean on someone. But to me, all that is dependent on kind of getting Domi out of that 2C spot. Like if you got Adam Henry, if you traded for him. Yeah. You know, you Which, do. Uh, another first rounder. Yeah, well, you know, we'll worry about the right. prices uh, okay, a little bit later. Enough. But, you know, when you had Domi, Matthews, Marner, Bertuzzi, Henrik, Nylander. Like, Bertuzzi, Henrik, Nylander, to me, I really like. And that changes all of a sudden. You puts guys in a good third-line position. It's one trade away, and I know it's costly, but... It is. Fraser Minton, a first, you know, mm. U10, a Van Henrik. Yes. For me, Domi, I just, I worry about him in that as, as a center in the playoff. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna uh, be a first round pick for Adam Henry Kipper, <clears throat> buddy, buddy, Sean Monahan. Yeah, I guess. I guess that's all you need to know. There is the market. Yeah, Seems Adam like Henry is considered better and more valuable well, than Sean Monahan. If I'm looking at the least pick situation, and if it's gonna be. You're going to trade two first round picks, and it's going to be Tanev and Adam Henrique on your team. I think you'd probably want bigger upgrades than that, to be honest with you. But that's, I guess, the price of doing business around this time of year. But it's uh, and, a definitely a scary and, outlook. Henrique is going to be a rental, guys. And Absolutely. he kills penalties. The Leafs are 22nd in uh, penalty killing. So is Tanev. Like it's, it improves your team in yes. areas you need help. It's mm-hmm. not just a luxury item. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, he's straight rental. Like you're not he is. retaining him. Um, have I told you um, I think Holmberg is a pretty good player? Did I ever mention that to you guys? <laughs> That's come up, yeah. I remember, like, you know, I I'm do. like, why wouldn't a team just sign this guy? I do remember that. He sure yeah. shot it right into the net last night. That was nice. That, oh. was, that, was, a, that was a goal scorer's goal. Like, him he and dropped Matthews his shoulders. Have a little chemistry too. A little, yeah, uh, the big yeah. guys like him. They do. You can tell. They pass to him. Did you ever, like, Marner's comments about yeah. him? He's the, he, like, they love him. Yeah. And they absolutely, okay, for all their overpriced, people think that, you know, the guys make too much money. They hogged all the money. They absolutely stole this guy at the, at the this summer at 800, 800 for two years. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like crazy. Yeah. When and he it, said that when he got beat out by Fraser Mitten in camp, but uh, that's, God, just, that's tough to look back uh, at. Uh, <laughs> guys, he didn't. That never happened. It's just, <laughs> it's just whatever they said. They wanted. It's Minton. just whatever yeah. narrative they put out. Why yeah. do you think the Minton thing happened? Looking back at it, do you think it was for World Juniors? Do you think it was for trade value? Do yes. you think it was for experience? Yes, 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 think, yes, oh, all, all of that, all of it. Yes. And listen, none the, of it was this guy listen, helps us win. The, the guy than... did show well. He did. He and I job. think it, it, it's not a stretch to say we're going to reward him or we're going to show other people that you can do this too. Like it was. I'm okay with that that narrative, that storyline, but Holmberg to me should have been a guy that would have left you an easy decision to not pay Camp two point four. That guy should be right there on that fourth hole minimum with the ability to move up. They should have groomed him. What like Camp walk? Absolutely. What Camp have last year? Fifteen goals, best penalty care. killer in the I, I'm, team. I like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not paying Camp two point five million dollars. I'm sorry. I would love the two point five right now yeah. to go get some help, and Holmberg would have been right there. But it's water I think, under the I bridge. think it's a better co- conversation about you know why are we giving David Camp a pass for just fallen off this year yeah he has not been half as effective best game of the year last year yeah. uh, last night it was awesome last yeah. night but that's he, when you see him play well it's like oh right like but that's really nice uh, eventually like he, there's not is you're, you're gonna 
you're going to trade for some guys. You're going to have to move some of these guys out. They're all not going to two point four. Was it two point four for four years? Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, it was yeah. almost ten million dollars. Yeah. I would have gone Holmberg. Say, hey, listen, Kemp, great. Thanks for coming by, but we're not we're not committing ten million dollars to you. Thanks for coming by. I uh, I think you're right. That yeah. makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, um, let's hit a break. All right. Oh, geez, yeah, we're late. Yeah, we gotta go. Leafs start winning, eh? And the just just time flies. <laughs> oh, just, time yeah, flies exactly. fun, no. All right. Uh, Joshua Cloak, as we said, will come back uh, after the break. He's going to tell us what changed in the last six games to now push the Leafs towards the trade deadline. That and more when we return to Real Kipper and Bourne. Without hesitation, let's throw it to Denver, Colorado. Joshua Cloak, sunny Leaf Denver. writer for The Athletic, joins us from a sunny patio, maybe? <laughs> Definitely, maybe. We're at Cerebral Brewing <laughs> here in, in, in Denver. Uh, mm. When the Leafs get a day off, so do we. Um, but I would interrupt all of it to join you, too. Oh, no, that's awesome. Thanks, Thanks for joining us, man. And uh when the leafs win it just makes your job that much easier doesn't it it, it does it's 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 the simple things you know I, I was having a conversation with one of the veterans on the team um just about where they were at going into the game in arizona and asking him about you know the day off that they had at austin matthews house um and it was the it was the most relaxed i'd seen that team in in months and I just kind of asked him why, and he just said, it's, it's incredible what a little bit of vitamin D will do to you. And that has just kind of permeated, you know, throughout the team uh, over the last few days. They just, the Leafs are, are, are it's never not tense around the Maple Leafs. Uh, but this week in particular, they just, they sound, they look, they feel so much more relaxed. Um, and I think we can see that in the way they're playing, right? Yeah, I mean, vitamin D helps. Winning goes a long way, too. Who yep. do you think is feeling the most relief uh, with a little bit of success here? Oh, unquestionably Sheldon Keefe right now. Yeah. Right? Like, how 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 long ago were people calling for his head? I mean, people always call for, for people's heads on Twitter. But, um, you know, it wasn't that long ago that, that people were wondering if a coaching change was going to be necessary. People were wondering if, if Sheldon Keefe was the right person to kind of lead this this team forward. Um, but what's interesting here is how much kind of goodwill Sheldon Keefe has bought within the team over the last week. As of a few weeks ago, as of probably about two weeks ago, they were scheduled to practice during their day off in Arizona. And Keefe called an audible and, and gave you know the team the day off so they could all go to Austin Matthews Pad. And my understanding is Shane Doan had all the coaches over at his place in Arizona. These are intangible things, but these kind of team building things go a long way with the team to say, okay, the coach trusts us to give us a day off. Um, we've got to hold up our end of the bargain. So I think Sheldon Keefe is feeling really good. And, and it's interesting too, when you look at last night's game, you have Morgan Riley coming back. And that was a big question going into the game is, is Sheldon Keefe going to mess with, you know, the two pairs, Simone Benoit, Jake McCabe. Uh, Timothy Lilligren and TJ Brody. These are pairs that worked really well. Is he going to mess with them? Because we know Sheldon Keith in the past has, has liked to tinker. He's liked to move things around. He kept it really simple. He kept Morgan Riley out with, with William Loggison, and he kept those pairs together, and the Leafs had one of their best games of the season. So I think you're seeing a far more relaxed Sheldon Keith right now. And, and, yeah, so to answer your question, he's he's the one feeling the least amount of heat right now. We're talking to Joshua Cloak, Leaf writer for The Athletic. Uh, in your latest article, Josh, you spoke of the Leafs playing their best hockey this season, and you also left it out there. Will it affect their, their approach to the trade deadline? So will it? If you had asked me that a week ago, I would have said, I, I think they just hold and try and maybe build around the periphery and, and add, you know, the that maybe like a six defenseman, that type of player, and that's it. Because if you looked at that roster and you looked at the way that they were playing, you would have said, I don't know if I'm seeing a group here that I would go all in on the way that, you know, Kyle Dubas went all in on the team in, in 21 and 23. 
But then you look at the way that Austin Matthews is playing. You look at the depth scoring that they've gotten over the last few games, and you start to say, well, if they're starting to put it together, maybe we owe it to this core. And by we, I mean Leafs management. Maybe they owe it to this core to say, we're only going to get so many years where a player is scoring, you know, 70 plus goals in a year. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we double down on that? Um, I don't think they're inclined as my understanding is that they're not inclined to move Easton Cowan or Fraser Minton. You know, they're two best prospects right now. The first round pick, my understanding is probably only going to be in play if it's not for a rental. So maybe you look at this team a little bit differently and say that if, if they're figuring it out and if they're playing to their potential, perhaps we owe it to them because you could argue through, you know, December and January, they, they were not playing to their potential. Look, you've been around that team for some years now and, you know, when different guys come in, it changes the vibe, the different personalities, right? Joe Thornton and been there and Marlowe has been there and, you yep. know, Spezza, you know, big, big personalities at times. How does this year's team feel different from previous versions? What sort of personalities are at play there that maybe make this team unique to previous runs they've been on? It just feels a lot more business-like. You know, they always kind of added those pieces. You mentioned Thornton, Marlowe. I'd put Wayne Simmons in there. Yeah. Uh, Felino as, as pieces that they, they brought in to kind of boost the, the morale of the group and, and add that kind of leadership piece that I think that they were missing. I think they look at this group now and say, this this team is not young anymore, right? They're they're all kind of leaders in their own right. I, again, I, I brought it up before, but I think it's it's really interesting. I I think Austin Matthews is is looking, sounding, and acting like a leader in a way that he hasn't in years past. It's simple things like saying, "I'm going to have everyone over to my house um, in Arizona for an entire day, day and a half," um, because this I I feel that confident kind of being the, the face of this team. Um, so I, I just don't think they feel the need to, to, to supplement with that type of player anymore. One player that I've been talking to a lot and who sounds and, again, looks and feels more comfortable than he has when he was acquired is Jake McCabe. Mm -hmm. Right When he was acquired, I think they looked at him and said, he can be that Jake Muzzin type, that grizzled veteran, but it never really clicked last season. He was playing his first playoff games – Jake McCabe is playing his best hockey as a Leaf right now, and he's far more comfortable standing in front of the cameras, which is not an easy thing to do in Toronto. Um, but he is he seems a lot more comfortable being a voice within this team, and it's a gruff, hardened voice. But, you know, when you look at last night, their best game of the season, one of their best games of the season, Jake McCabe is the one coming out and saying, when we're all playing confident, when we're all feeling it, we're a scary team. And that's what's been missing so far this, this season is as well as they've played, they haven't yet had someone come out and kind of put the stamp on things and saying, we're a good team. We deserve to be thought of as a good team. And that's what I took away from Jake McCabe, again, coming out and, and just kind of fortifying that confidence around this team right now. I don't know if it's been lost in all of this, but just the fact that, uh, you know, Mitch Marner is also playing the best hockey, I think, of his career and we uh, we know he's on a multiple assists uh, run of six straight games. Uh, only longer streak uh, in NHL history is eight by Wayne Gretzky. Like that's that's just phenomenal numbers. But it's just these subtle little plays he makes, even in his in his own zone to to send them off and running uh, on on goals. Uh, I mean, the leadership group is is at their all time high right now. But isn't, and, and this is my, just my theory, you guys can choose to disagree, but isn't it a little bit better when Mitch Marner isn't the focal point of the conversation? Because I find when Mitch Marner spends a little too much time in front of the cameras and he says things about how, you know, we don't look at social media, but we know the entire world is against us. Like, that's when you feel like the world is kind of crowding in on Mitch Marner. Um, and that's when he doesn't play his best. Like, he's at his best when the weight of the world isn't on his shoulders. And we haven't spoken as much to, to Mitch. And like you said, like we're not talking about him as much. I don't think that's the worst thing. Let him play, let him do what he does best, which is, you know, kind of create magic in the offensive zone. So you're right. We haven't been talking about the fact that, you know, game after game, he's, he's putting up multi-point performances. 
But if we're not talking about it, and as those performances keep come keep coming, I think that's going to suit Sheldon Keith and the Leafs management. And to be frank, Mitch Marner, I think that's going to suit him fine. For sure. And uh, and last one for me, just your thoughts on Tavares playing third line and, and the second power play unit, you know, what that can do for a guy like Bertuzzi and how I would say Tavares has handled it pretty well. Yeah, I think that move is a little less about demoting uh, John Tavares and more about promoting Tyler Bertuzzi. Mm. Like, he's still not where he needs to be. And, and it, we're not talking about it as much because they're winning hockey games. Um but if the Leafs are going to do anything in the playoffs, they need the kind of secondary scoring that they got yesterday. And Tyler Bertuzzi's season to this point in Toronto has been a you know something of a disappointment just because of the production. So Sheldon keeps a smart guy. He knows that you know that the, the best way to get that production is to build the player up. He's he's hardly been as critical of him as he has of, of other players. And I think that's because he's learned with Tyler Bertuzzi. He's the type that, that needs to be built up, needs a bit of the arm around the shoulder, needs to be given that, those opportunities because the chances have, have come. Uh, the conversion rate just hasn't been there. So I, I don't look at it as, you know, John Tavares is falling off. I think it's just a matter of doing everything possible to put Tyler Bertuzzi in the right situations. And look, if you Sheldon Keith, you feel good about that because he did something similar with, with Max Domi and Max Domi has his first multi-goal game last night. And, and Max Domi is playing with the kind of snarl that, you know, we all thought he would show from game one. So I think, you know, Sheldon Keith has learned enough about his players to, to know which players need an arm around the shoulder, which ones need a, a kick in the behind. Um, you know, I would put Timothy Lilligren in that group as well. Like, he's, he was, he's flourished without Morgan Riley. Um so kudos to Keith, and, and I, I think we're going to see Bertuzzi in that role a little bit more until his, his game really takes off the way that, that everybody hopes it will. Josh, go and enjoy your, your patio. And, and for the record, um, were, you, were you, for those of you that uh, aren't watching us on TV, we've got him on Zoom. Are you, have you been holding up your, your camera, your phone by hand this whole time? Like, how have I been doing? Okay, like great, very impressive. like 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 you haven't had one beer. That's how <laughs> well, you're doing. The truth is, yeah, it's, I'm holding it with my right arm, and, and now you know it, it's going to be useless afterwards. It's gonna be all, <laughs> all left hand uh, with the beer. Great now. job. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day off. Thanks, boys. All Thanks, right. man. Enjoy. Joshua Cloak from the Athletic. Is that not the best part about being a hockey? Well, I should say that. What oh. am I? One of the better parts about being a hockey player. How does that happen? All I don't the know, time? It scares me every time. Uh, just like going to a city that's warm, you know, and being like, oh, oh yeah, you know, like getting to go somewhere. Oh, what a delight! Denver, hit the, hit, Arizona, hit, hit the hills, Vegas. hit the hills. How oh, do you can play golf and and ski same day in Denver? Oh, that would be really cool. A that's a bucket list. I don't think list. you can on an NHL contract. I don't think that's. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it is 12 degrees and sunny yeah. in Denver right now. Beautiful. Yep. I might be yeah. that here, to be honest. Although it's supposed to be like minus 10 by later. I, I saw somebody tweet, how am I supposed to dress for a day that's 8 degrees and then minus 20 at night? Yeah. That's a tough one in Toronto that I have. swing. Yeah. You could ski in Collingwood and golf right now in Ontario, yeah, southern Rosedale. Ontario, the way it's going. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not sure, far I'm not sure the super at, at Rosedale would like you hack it on the fairway right Lake now. Thank you. Yeah, well, no, uh, I don't have enough sway there. Sammy, you got the you've been sporting the Blue Jay hat. Yeah, hey. Look at this brand new. What, what do you think? This bucket. I just think and You're hope, excited. Hope, hope springs eternal, buddy. And it's the oh, sun's out. They time. play their first spring game tomorrow that you can hear right here on Sports Five Ninety The Fan. And uh, get excited, folks. We're back. So is that an official hat that they'll be wearing this no. year? No, oh, no, just no. It's a, just a hat. All right. It's a hat with their logo. You like uh -huh. it? No. no, I do. Oh, okay. I'm okay yeah. with it. Good. Sam has five thousand hats. Yeah, I do. Getting divorced with five thousand hats. Only two hundred. Our thanks to Joshua Cloak. Um, and coming up next, yes, Off the Rails Friday, led by none other than Doug McLean. So he missed last week. I can't wait to see what is up next. When we return, Doug McLean. Time to take it up a notch on Off the Rails Friday. Not Nick Kiprios. Not intellectually, Moore. though, Kip. What's that? Not intellectually taking it up a notch. Uh, that's up to our next guest. Uh, energy, maybe, but. Sam McKee. <laughs>
We're all here together on this Friday and coming off a week off. So he is like raring to go. Is he? Let's, let's bring him in after I tell you that this hour, Real Kipper and Born, brought to you by Bet365. All right. Let's bring him in. Doug McLean, former NHL president, author so, of Draft Day. Um, so, so. Where you I just been? I want you guys to why you to know that i took some time i wanted to look more intellectual i watched you guys on the set last night doing the leafs game and the energy is just not there you know, <laughs> you've got to get the energy up you know that's why you we bring you in so anyway i went today the fir- or this week the first time i bought a pair of glasses by myself without having deb berman with me <laughs> How did I do? I wanted to look more intellectual. You did How great. How do they look? Um, I, like they ten out have, of ten for me. Like they should be on a chain, hanging. <laughs> Are they transition so anyway, lenses? Yeah, oh, they're transitional. Definitely, I always go with transitionals. But listen, I had a a terrible night last night. I get a call from a friend. What are the Leafs doing? They traded Nylander to Columbus for Bemstrom. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, wow, they're really shaking it up there. <laughs> anyway, I realized it was the wrong Nylander. Anyway, uh, look, things are exciting. I mean, the pom-poms are out. I'm not going to accept them yet, but it has just been a great run by your Leafs. And uh, I, you- I'm blown away. Keith? Keith has turned Domi into Bure. He looked like he looked like Pavel last night. And Bertuzzi starting to look like Probert. Like how how is he doing this? What is Keith doing? So a lot of debate the last couple of weeks. Should they go in? Should they go out? Should they pass? Did they did they go too much already with the likes of Ryan O'Reilly or Nick Felino in the past? Does anything in the last game for you change the way you feel about Brad Tree living, Brendan Shanahan approaching the trade deadline? Well, it's funny on, on, on my the class I'm teaching there, sports management worldwide. We had this debate the other night, and and it really is a pretty simple debate. And I think you and I have talked about it, Nick. Uh, when you've got the best player in the league the best player in the league in you think it's Marner. I think it's Matthews. Um, but if, when you have the best player in the league, you got to, you got to go all in at, at his age, you got to go all in and they've got to, you know, they've got to move. Do you think Keith minds if they lose Mitten or Cowan? Like seriously, Doug, what is this faux positivity? Colin Matthews, the best player in the league, Colin Bertuzzi, Probert, Colin Domi, Bure, what's going on right now? It's called giving shot, subtle shots. <laughs> <laughs> You're not buying it, eh? The least are no different to you? You're not buying it, this at you all? Know what? I, I'll tell you what. They've tried for five years to fix their bottom six. Mm. And at least they've got some guys in their bottom six that'll play with a little bit of bite. I didn't envision Tavares being in their bottom six with as being the way to fix it. But he certainly has fit in well with that group. So, and it looks like he's helped it. I, I mean, you can't, you can't complain about the way they're playing. I, I got to give them full marks. Morgan Riley's out, and they battled. They tightened up. They played hard. I, you know what? I'm telling you this, guys. They will not beat Florida in the first round. But I'll tell you this right now. They may give Boston a really great run in the first round. And they might be better than Boston. Depending, does Boston get Hannafin? Wouldn't surprise me. They'll figure it out how to get Hannafin, Ooh. Boston, before this is before this is over. And that would really solidify them. But uh, they will give Boston everything Boston can handle, as long as the kid comes up in goal and is, was as good as he was before. Is part of your, your little shtick on giving the Leafs a shot on our national shows because, you know, you're, you're, is it Brother John in, in Vancouver and in B.C. that, uh, you know, you got to make happy. I've got to, uh, well, 
I, I try to stay in the down low on Brother John because he puts out a lot of controversial tweets. <laughs> he's actually living. He's actually living in Prince Edward Island now, and he's got a nice little marijuana company going. So I, I'm just giving him a little plug. <laughs> let's let's try not to get him arrested between now and the end of the segment, please. Okay, Brother John's a, he's a good lad. All right, John and uh, nephew Keaton. So. Uh, <laughs> As far as the rest of the country goes now, the Leafs are the hottest team in the country. And where is Vancouver with this recent slide for you? Well, you know, they're still there, you know, with the way Demko has been all year, with the way Hughes, Pedersen, the big line is played. I, I, I think Vancouver is going to be fine. But I'll tell you what, uh, Edmonton's played well. Uh, Vegas is, you know, really scrambling right now because of the injuries to Stone and serious injuries to he and Eichel. I mean, it's a big blow to them. They're not as deep as they were. So um, the West is going to be really, really challenging. I, I love the way Edmund. Third line center. I desperately need a third line center. So we'll see what happens. I want to get your take on, uh, I don't know if you heard Rick Tockett's comments after the game, uh, their last game here, but he basically said, you know, we need more from guys. We're not getting enough effort. He really was was hard on his team publicly. Do you think in the first year, you know, I, I understand, first calendar year anyway, that he's been to the club, can it be too much sometimes for a team? Or is this, do you like seeing a guy go after his team, even despite all the success they've had this season? You know, we talked about it earlier in the year on this show. I, I don't really like it. I, I, I don't mind. I, I think that the place is in the dressing room and, and, and give it to them there. I mean, you get the Rick bonus went after the Jets the other night. They came out and had a pretty good period. But that was between periods, and he talked to his team. I, I think that's the place for it. You get Sometimes you get a little carried away when you're, when you're in first place. I mean, look, when I was in first place with the Panthers, I was kind of cocky too, you know, and I used to say things I shouldn't have said. So I, I think you got to be a little bit careful. I really do. And, look, they're a good team. They've played well. They've had a good year. Tockett's done a good job. But, but. Let me ask you about uh, Winnipeg. Uh, you, you mentioned Rick Bonus. Uh, the ownership group is talking about attendance must improve uh, to avoid future problems, Mac. Uh, oh, my the, the, God. The, the oh thought my is God. Gary Bettman's going, Bettman's going out there Tuesday, I think, to, to address uh, the situation. Like, like how big of a concern is this here? <laughs> you know, I... I get a kick out of this. I really do. I, I watched the game the other night with the Leafs playing the Coyotes. Tell him to to take a trip to Arizona on his way to Winnipeg and talk about what's going on there when I've got to watch a game on National Hockey Night in Canada yeah. from a college arena with the dressing room outside, the visitor dressing room, outside in a trailer. That, and I've got to watch that. And this is the national. Idea. And he's going to Winnipeg. I, I'd, I'd stop. I'd, I'd stop in Phoenix on the way. And you know, like F Phoenix had 120 million in revenue last year. 120 million in revenue last year. And it's it, you spend what almost a hundred on your players between NHL, minor league, all the all the extra player costs. So they've got twenty million to run their franchise with salaries, and I mean, come on, guys, he's going to Winnipeg. <laughs> Give me a break. Ottawa had one hundred and twenty-eight million in revenue. I mean, I, I don't get it. Look, if the owners are upset, that's fine. But Gary shouldn't be upset about the Winnipeg Jets. He's got other fish to fry. The current Arizona Coyotes will be called what in September of twenty twenty-four? Uh. <laughs> look he for whatever reason gary wants to keep that market because we know it's a great it's yeah. a big market but until they get a bill and look we've been listening to this for 20 years building 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 i mean you know we played there in the in the downtown arena in phoenix and half the seats you couldn't see the ice and now they're in this you know they, they go to glendale i'll never forget pulling up to glendale they come into columbus gretzky and the owners flew into columbus and yeah. walked our building and said, okay, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna build this unbelievable building. I pull up in the bus a year later, two years later, we play our first game there. 
And there, there was cows that were right up against the parking lot. It was like a it was in it was the a, middle of nowhere. It was in a farmer's field. I'm on the bus. I'm thinking, what? Are we going in to play with the cows? Or what is this all about? So anyway, look, I, I just I just shake my head. But anyway, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, he'll fix Winnipeg, I guess, but he better he better focus a little bit on what I watched the other night because it yeah. was embarrassing to the league. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So just revisit a little bit. You you think you think Hannafin ends up in in Boston here? I I think Boston will do everything in their power to get Hannafin in Boston. He's a Boston yeah, kid. There. It, it, it's a it's a, a definite resign. They're going to have to manipulate the cap. Here's their problem: they don't have you know, first, second, third picks. They're going to have to try to sell and move some prospects or some good young players in this deal to make it happen. They'll be able to figure out the cap space. they got a ton of guys as UFOs coming off the books. Um, you know, uh, so it'll be, I, I think they'll make an awful, a big run to get Hannafin. And if they do, uh, they're a different team. I mean, look, is he the star we're all portraying him to be? No, he's not as good as we all think he is. But he's good. He's a good player. And he would fit in really nice with their group. Yeah, I, I've talked to enough teams where, Mac, of course, there's a marketplace. We know, right? You put him up yeah. for, for auction and, and you get to bid on him. That's what UFA is all about. But there's some teams that don't value him as high as maybe even Calgary did at 7.5 AAV. There's some teams that are telling me that he should be around six, six and a quarter. Um it's. I, he, he's not. I agree with them. He, he's not going to be a guy uh, mentioned he, but, for a Norris he, Trophy every year. No, but here's why he's perfect in Boston because it goes McAvoy, Hannafin, Carlo. All of a sudden, you've got a really nice group mm -hmm. there. He's not, in my opinion, he's not a number one guy. He's not a number one Stanley Cup winner type guy. McAvoy is a number one guy though. And Carlo's been really good, and they've that would give them a real nice fit. Lindholm was a great pickup. I thought the best pickup of the trade deadline was Lindholm. Um, not uh, you know the the defenseman they got from Anaheim, you know. So it's it's they've got a really good blue line if they get him. You know, it's just occurring to me is I don't think we ever got you to weigh in on Morgan Riley's cross check on Ridley Gregg and the subsequent suspension. So I don't know what you thought about it, but I do want to know how you feel about the Leafs playing well without Morgan Riley and if there's any connection or if it's just coincidence or what. A rallying cry. Sure. Yeah, I, I think it was, and I think it was good for the team. And you know what? The guys respected what Morgan did. did you know, it, it was, you know, the revenge factor is Gary's and, and George Peros. George Peros, he, revenge? I mean, did... I mean, I coached against him. You know, now revenge is the worst thing that's ever happened in the history of the hockey. So I, I, I hated the five-game suspension, but I understand it. You cannot cross-check a guy in the head. It went to the shoulder, went to the head. They weren't going to back off. And the, and the fact that it was after the whistle. So I, I didn't – I kind of liked what he did. I didn't like that he hit him in the face. That's all. And I like Ridley Greg. Greg. I mean, this kid's I, – I love his bite. Yeah, I love his character, the slap shot and that big deal. But you know what? I thought it was a rallying cry for the team and they stepped up for him because they respect him so much. I thought it was good. Last night, Mac, uh, busy night in the NHL, in including uh, a Carolina, Florida game, which I caught a lot of it. And it really gave me a, a, a playoff vibe. Uh, and, and Florida didn't actually looked like they, they lost too much of a step when, when Matthew Kachuk actually left um, the hockey game and, and didn't return. Uh, it, between Boston and Toronto and Tampa Bay, like Rangers, is it, does it got to go through Florida first from here on in? You know what? I hate to say this, but my record as the winningest playoff coach in Panther history is in jeopardy. Oh no! <laughs> it, it is. In, it, it's been there almost as long as the Gretzky leading the league, but it, it's going down the tubes this year. And you know, I'm I'm going to be happy for Paul Maurice, but you know what? I'll go to number two in the record books, and that's that's okay. 
it's going through Florida with the way they're playing, boys. And they are a vicious team to play against. They play a vicious game. And, you know, I think about Matthew Kachuk often because he's the guy that stirs the drink there. I loved it when he said, Nick, I meant we, you and I talked about when he said our line's objective was to go out and not touch the puck for the first period. Yeah. Just pound people. Yeah. Just go after people. And I know you guys probably talked about it, but I, I just love what they're bringing to the table and how well they're playing. And Bobrovsky, I mean, can he falter? Yeah, he's capable of faltering at playoff time. There's no denying that. Last year, he was so good. But Tampa and these teams, they're not even close to them, in my opinion. Not even close. So we'll see. Mac, you've got a lot of experience. Carolina. I'll go ahead. Hey, Freddie Ann. I mean, Carolina are going to win the – I mean, I love what goes on in Carolina with, with Brenda Moore, but if they don't get their goaltending figured out between now and the playoffs, it's the same story. They, you can't win. You know, Freddie, hopefully he comes back and can play, but uh, that's a disappointment for me there. I wanted Sorry to, to interrupt. No, no, no. I wanted to ask you, you got a lot of experience in, you know, dealing with the relationships behind the scenes of a GM, dealing with other GMs. You know, we were talking earlier on this show about uh, Tanev being available for Calgary, but for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Brad Tree Living is here, and you wonder, do they want to deal with a former general manager? Would a GM, would they ever not make the best deal available for them just because they're like, you know what, we don't like the way that guy left here, or this relationship's not as good as that one? Uh, typically, no. Typically, no. But I would love to know what Murray Edwards, who is a fairly big figure a daunting figure in calgary in the ownership group how his relationship is with brad mm -hmm. and it, you know it, sometimes it was happening I, I don't want you doing a deal with that team i mean i've heard that but i i've never really experienced it you got to do what's best for your franchise you got to make the best deal you can if they're not going to be able to get them signed they've got to move them and get the best price i i like what craig is doing how he's handling this He's not getting carried away with the playoff run. He's focused on, on, on what he's got to focus on, and that's building the team. And it'll be fun to watch. I mean, it, Hannafin, Gensel, a few guys. I mean, there's a few. Adam Henrik. Uh, I mean, there's a, a lot of teams can use the third-line centerman boys at playoff time. A lot of teams. And uh, most teams aren't as lucky to have a John Tavares in the number three hole, you know. Mac, we're, we're a couple of weeks from a trade deadline. It's awfully quiet here is it is it because of just uh the salary cap are we going to see a lot of third teams come into play to alleviate still the cap how hard would it be for a sell if you were the general manager of say columbus today and saying listen we're gonna we're gonna park some money here and we're gonna build up some stock and and draft picks i mean is that an easy sell to an owner that hey spend a million or two and let's get a first rounder uh, or second rounder just a minute the columbus are paying larson still as, as a coach who i don't know how long he's been gone as long as i have and they're still paying him larson they're still paying babcock a few million a year they're still playing they gotta oh kekalana now i mean like they've got more money on the side than i had for payroll when I was there. <laughs> so, so, you know, can, are they going to take money? I'm not sure of that. We'll see. But I know it wasn't very pleasant when I was there when you were holding on to a few dollars. Look, teams are going to do it. The only way some of these trades are ever going to happen is they're going to have to bring in third parties. They're, they're going to have to. And it, it's getting easier to do that because people are buying into that. It's, a, it's, a, it's, you know, a relatively new strategy the last number of years. And it's it's out there. It's it's if you can get good assets and pay dollars for draft picks, why not why not do that? Uh, Doug, there we're talking to oh, go ahead. money well, well spent. Money well spent if you can do it. Well, yeah, we look at Seth Jarvis coming to Carolina. That was with the Patrick Marlowe, them unloading that right. That's panned out 100%. beautifully for Carolina. Um, we were talking before we came on here about uh, Mark Andre Fleury, and you know we saw a headline today on I think it was NHL.com about how. Mark andre Fleury should have some say into, you know, where he goes or where he gets traded at this point. What do you think a Hall of Fame level guy like him is owed at a deadline like this? Is that fair that he should have some di terms to dictate where he goes? He, he should dictate based on what's in his contract and his no movement. That, yeah. that's, that's, as the as the that's as far as the dictation goes. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, 
that's that's what he was, you know, his agent negotiated that. That's what he's got to go off of. After dictating other than that, I'm sorry. I, I mean, look, and he's a hell of a guy. I know he's one of the great guys in the game. And, yeah, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. Did Wayne – I guess Wayne dictated he was going to L.A., did he, Nick? He probably told you that. <laughs> and one of the night, one of the nights at the Ritz, I'm sure he broke that to you before I got off work. I, before I could beat you guys over there, I, he probably slipped that that he di- he dictated he was going to L.A. Um, speaking That's of maybe the only example, you know. Speaking of goaltendings, uh, goaltenders, there there is a market out there, and it's probably a stronger market than we've seen in a long time. Were you ever in a situation where you would consider a goalie at the trade deadline? We know skaters and defense, but getting a goalie at the trade deadline doesn't happen very often, especially when we're talking about someone like Markstrom right now who's at the, the peak of his career. Well, we, we traded uh, Mark Denis to Tampa at the deadline and uh, for Freddie Modine, that was our deal. And, uh, you know, Freddie came in and played really well, and Mark gave them a couple of good years there. But uh, that was the that was the closest I ever came at a deadline deal. And you know, um, you know, other than that, it, you know, but is the market that good? I mean, like Flurry's out there. Who else is out there that you would really want? Well, as a goaltender? it's just L.A., New Jersey. Saros? Well, give me the right. name. Yeah, give me yeah, but Nashville. The name. You see Saros, Jacob Markstrom. Yeah, Soros, Soros, people are so, calling on Soros. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look. Philly it, needs a goalie. When you, yeah, when you watch Nashville, if you're going to move Soros, I mean, it, that's the, the one of their major strengths is this guy in goal, and he probably wants to be there. Markstrom has been so good. Where is Calgary going to be without Markstrom? I, I'm shocked New Jersey didn't get a Markstrom deal. Markstrom and Tanoff. I'm shocked they didn't pull that off in the last couple of weeks to get those two guys in place and give a, give themselves a real chance to make the playoffs. And it didn't happen. Um, so yeah, there's some goalies, but are they, you know, I, yeah, those are two great names and you know, they could move and they would certainly help teams, but big decision to let Markstrom go and a bigger decision to let Saros go in my opinion. All right. Um, just one more for you before I let you go. Uh, Cause this is kind of given the term off the rails. Rimmer, what? Just a minute. Rimmer wants to know how good Nylander is. Is he close to his brother, or is there a little drop <laughs> off? Is there a little? Is there a little drop hey, off there? Yeah, hey, is, hey. This is John Davidson's tell him, big deal. Tell him the JD's first big deal. Tell him the drop offs roughly ninety one million dollars. <laughs> Wayne to Brent. <laughs> the drop off is like when I'm hiking in the Rockies. That's what the drop off is when you look <laughs> over the cliff and you get dizzy. The vertigo clicks in. That's the drop off. Okay. So uh, JD, I just wanted to I wanted to get his JD's first deal out there, you know? For sure. Uh, and I was gonna say that uh off the rails Friday has kind of a whole new mean- meaning. I don't know if you you heard or read this story about the Arizona Coyotes placing Adam Ruziska on waivers with the intent to terminate him. The, 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 the release comes in the wake of a video Mac being circulated online and it's been taken down since. And uh, by all means, go find it if you haven't seen it, but th- oh, this is yeah. really bizarre. Like what took so long? What took so long? I saw it this morning. Why did it take eight hours to terminate him? Like, I mean, what is it? What are these guys, 24 year old, what's he thinking about? He twears his head. I don't know. It's just it's twenty four yeah, year just, old. Where, where, where's his head? I, I'm I'm sorry. I mean, like, good grief. I, I, I don't I can't believe that a guy that he would do that. I mean, I've done dumb things in my life. Come on, we know that. But seriously, this yeah, is sad. In the segment you've said a few dumb <laughs> things. So like can you imagine today if you were a general manager what you'd have to pay for for detectives. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I have to say hello. I've, I've got an old friend, uh, an old friend that used to send me all kinds of stats from Phoenix. And her nickname was Stat Girl. And she used to send me tips. And she sent a note the other day. She wants one of my books autographed. So she's going to mail it to me. And she told me, her and I have just bonded tremendously because she told me she watched the Leafs 
last win the Stanley Cup in 67. I think her and I are the only two people alive that watched the Leafs win the Stanley Cup in 67. So I wanted to say hello to her. <laughs> I think Doug's getting catfished. <laughs> and, I think. Anything else you want to plug? What was that? Like, your, 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 where was that conversation again that you had? Don't, don't tell Deb Berman I picked out glasses without her. Whatever you do, do She'd not tell her that. <laughs> She'll be happy to know that uh, she's nowhere near going to get blamed for those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've taken her off the hook. Yeah, completely off the hook. Thanks, Mac. Guys, it, I really appreciate you having me on the show. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thanks, yeah, Mac. Yeah, you know. yeah. It's opened up so many doors for me. Like McCowan <laughs> hit me on. McCowan hit me on last week. It's well, really. And now you're a tenured <laughs> paid professor at that university. Yeah, it's. it's like, seriously, the opportunities are just going crazy. I that's heard you can a, get in on a weed shop in PEI, too. You got all sorts <laughs> of open doors. That's why you have to close the blinds, right? Just you, enough. <laughs> Keep the riffraff out. Doug McLean, everybody. <laughs> former NHL president, general manager, and author of Draft Day. Oh, he just, he, there's like, I, I don't, even have, to, don't even have to, don't even have to, like, ask him a question to start off. No, it's just like, funny. just, hey, Mac, go. <laughs> it's, I would say, one of the long, longest odds things that has panned out for our show is that I cannot believe we've had him on our show for three straight years and we're continued to allow to have him. <laughs> to be allowed to have him. It's like, I would not have bet on that. Would you get three straight years of Doug? Yeah. I would have bet against that. So, yeah, everything's gravy from here on out. I love listening to you when I'm on. <laughs> love having him on. Um, yeah, that's a really big blockbuster trade. For the Emil Bemstrom for Alex Nylander. Is there a weird, on, on, weirder on. condition in the history of hockey? Have you ever heard of that? The condition is if Bemstrom scores six goals for Pittsburgh, yeah. the sixth round pick that was traded yeah. with Alex Nylander becomes a third, which is a massive jump up in value. So Pittsburgh needs him to get five goals, then sit in the press box. It's but, almost right up there if the team scores like six goals everybody gets free pizza yeah it's very feels like betting it feels like yeah we'll just gamble a little bit here we'll see what happens i don't know anyway it used to be when the raptors scored 100 points and got a slice of pizza but then <laughs> now everyone in the league so, gets a hundred every now night now it is that if the road team missed a free throw in the fourth quarter it's a free slice of a pizza single free yes throw? so it's pretty generous wow yeah Anyways, you guys want to do game time? Sure. All right, nice. it's game time presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Now, I'm looking at the playoff odds to reach the playoffs here. So a little future for you. And the one to me that's pretty interesting and a team that's kind of on the, on the precipice here is Tampa. the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. They are minus 185 still to make the playoffs, but their odds on the other side are at plus 150. So they really have a pretty strong, like a plus 150 is not a great number for a team like that. They do have some belief that there's a real chance they miss the playoffs. Oh, I, I'm right there too. And you hate to just write off some of the great players of this mm -hmm. generation and Stamkos and Hedman and Vasilevsky, but Kucherov point. It's just not Sorelli. happening. I know. And it's that door for the devils is open. If they could just, but they've lost their last two games. They lost to the caps the other day. Mm -hmm. Like if they could just and put bad. some, yes, if they could just put some wins together, they're right there. So in terms of winning percentage, like they're, they're knocking on the door. Tampa's up five points, but, Jersey has uh, two games in hand there, so. And I'm just quickly scrambling. Islanders to too, two games in hand. Uh, the Devils number. The Devils to make the playoffs. Playoffs. They're plus 150 now. They're uh, minus 185 favorite to miss the playoffs this year. What are the Islanders? The Islanders are plus 280 favorites to make it and minus 380 to miss. So they really don't have any belief in the Islanders. Wow. Yeah. That seems a bit much. Yeah. Uh, so oh, hold Philly. on. The last one. Penguins. Penguinos. Oh, really? No, 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 no. Penguins. Go you on. kidding me? Playoffs? <laughs> the Penguinos are only plus 180 yeah. to make, uh, to make, and they are plus, minus 230 to miss. They believe in them more than the Islanders. They do believe in them, in them more than the Islanders. So The audacity. Yeah. And well, uh, a couple games in hand, right? Yeah, I see that. And to win outright the Stanley Cup, haven't checked in on this in a while, favorite. 
Favorite? Who, who is the favorite? Yeah, uh, Florida. Yeah, I could see Edmonton or Florida. Edmonton is the favorite at plus 750. The Rangers are second at plus 850. And the Panthers coming in at third at plus 900. The Toronto Maple Leafs have moved all the way up to plus 1,200, but they're still behind a bunch of teams. So they haven't totally convinced them yet. That one's going to change soon. The, uh, there are going to be some people. The Canucks that, are still 9-1. to you know, one, the, Bruins 9-1. to one, Colorado not plus 900. There's going to be betters that uh, are going to lure a lot of suckers out there. Oh. Sure. You know, the Leafs are actually <laughs> ahead of the Oilers in winning percentage by a hundredth of a decimal point. Mm-hmm. Like they are, they're right there. They're so 642 similar. and 643. The Oilers and the Leafs are so similar. Yeah. They really are. Like they haven't been able to like stop mirroring each other for the last few years. Jack Campbell solves no one's problems. No, he does not. Uh, and that was game time presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Okay. We're going to take a quick break here and we return We'll get into our news and notes we around need the text. NHL. Friday. We got lots. 590, 590. 590. Yeah. Anything on your mind, you mm. let us know, and we'll get you into the show. Get you the best weed shop in PEI. <laughs> Nick Kiprios, JB, and Sammy. Back after these words. All right. Bringing it home on the real Kipper and Born show. Nick Kiprios, Sammy McKee, JB. We That's have a, Justin we, Bourne for all of you. Yes. Just tuning in for the very first time. We have a tweet that says, would you trade Marner for Crosby right now? <laughs> Is that our Dr. first Phil tweet? Is that our first? Uh... I, I wouldn't dare read that because I don't know the answer. <laughs> but I think I, don't, I can't answer. Yeah, It'll you know be, the answer. It's a funny question. No, comment, no comments or questions at this time. <laughs> you know the answer. You would? No. You wouldn't? No. No. Sid's got how many Conn Smythe trophies? Was he got three Conn Smythe trophies? No, I don't think I get all that. Anymore. But I'm not He's trading got, a... Gino has one of them in their cups. I'm not trading a 36-year-old for a 26-year-old. It's crazy, guys. It's not that crazy. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I and I love, I love Sid, but uh, you're, you're really rolling the dice here on another year or so. And and Mitch is like in... in, in just entering his prime, just Remi- entering it. Reminds me of the questions my son asked me before he goes to bed. My seven-year-old son, you know, like, would you rather have, like, spaghetti hair, or, you know, like, fingernails, <laughs> and cheese? You know, like, whatever. It's just like, it's not a spaghetti thing. Hair. We're talking about nothing. Anyways, um, no, you answer now. Yes or no? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's it's all. all right. And it's, a lot of it's based. They need a in, center. It's a lot of it's based. And just me Where they are in their- adoring Sidney Crosby and having him be on the lease would be one of my life. points this year. Be one of my life's, not a bum. Be one of my, life, my life's greatest but, but, pleasures to have Sidney Crosby as a charm. Like, if you're going to completely roll the dice, it only has a year and a half, two playoff runs in him on his contract. That's all you need. Mitch is going to leave anyway. Be lifting it up after this one with him on the team. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was really off what, the rails. What current roster players won't beat Toronto Maple Leafs on March 9th? Nick Robertson. Mm-hmm. And end of list. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. You got anyone else? McMahon. McMahon. Uh, no, I think. And correct me if I'm wrong, but McMahon's UFA too, right? Yeah. Actually, we had a tweet. Somebody tweeted me something about that because I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't yeah. want to be the guy. That brought yeah. it up, but they said, "Could you give us an estimation on what his contract would look like if the lease were to sign him?" I don't now, know. yeah, a million or, bucks. Uh, like two first bu- of all, two right, times one. He's he's nuts to sign. He could, he can go on a heater here. Right now, he's signing uh, ten mil for eight years. <laughs> no, would if you went to him with two times one one right now? Would anyone not do that? He'd do that, right? I think he would for sure. Two one-way contracts at a million bucks. Let's go. Uh, no, 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 no. He's gonna get that. He's gonna get that. Oh yeah, from any other team or or more. Like there's just there's upside here. There's Declared only waivers. There's only twenty seven. It doesn't matter. You've got twenty five plus regular season games, and you, if you have a good playoff, you're UFA. He could conceivably really do some. 
like has the yeah. chance to ratchet that yeah. number up. If he scores another six goals this year and he gets to 15 and then yeah. he has a playoff run, like that's an ambitious out- output. Some but. of the names that may not be around for the Leafs, uh, I'd like to try to move Camp's contract out. And he has a modified no trade. Which is really? Like uh, oh, I'd, everyone. I'd Why? Like, I know. I'd like to probably, he might need to move Brody's number out to bring a number in buddy he's on a tear yeah anyways and then a whole lot of first round picks and minton there's not a oh, geez louise we're trading everything here they oh, have three I fifths mean, how about a fifth rounder will be out too. uh and a first team like vancouver i don't know how much they've got left to to, to change what has still been a terrific season with a, a lineup that looks like is coming together. What so. did you think of Talkett's comments? I asked Doug about them, but did you, did you hear what he said? He basically said that you... Yeah, well, Rick's a little old school, too. Like, when you think about uh, a guy like Keenan coaching him, he's, every once in a while, it's it's okay for your team to be upset at you or pissed off at you, or it's the old kind of galvanize the group, and if I need to be a bad guy for a day or a week, I'm fine with it. I admire coaches that do that. I'm just like, I'm going to go ahead and throw myself out there and they can hate me together. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't... Not that they I, hate I think, Rick. I'm I just think saying coaches, in coaches And I know Max sitting there going, well, you should challenge your players behind the scenes. But there is also that public outcry too that can add a little stress in your life too. It's one thing to be told you, you know, you're no good in a now closed the press is asking you about it your coach is calling a, you in a closed dressing room but after that's done mm-hmm. and then you move it outside you'd like to keep it more of a secret yeah <laughs> so, that you're not as good as you know your 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 coach says you are right. it, 403 that's Cal, is that Calgary it is yeah 403 got a text from Calgary here what should uh what should flames fans be retur- uh hoping for on the return for Hannafin Hanev and Markstrom Hannafin, Tanev, and who? And Markstrom. And Markstrom. Oh, my God. I a mean, lot. Hannafin is a first-rounder, is at a minimum, probably a prospect and a player. Like, this guy is yeah, no, a Hannafin, 26-year-old. Yeah, Hannafin, Hannafin uh, for, for a chance to uh, get Hannafin, you'd have to give up, for sure, two or three pieces, I think. Like, picks or? First uh, and... And a top prospect, and third a and a prospect, something like and that. And like Tanev is a first, and yeah. Markstrom's yeah. another. We we got a text haul. earlier talking about Adam Henrique, and and someone mentioned Anaheim wanting a first and two thirds. Yeah. So a first and two thirds for it, Henrique, if that's the going. The, the problem is, oh. Oh, with it being that expensive, you got to get to the eleventh hour on May eighth. Yeah. That that pushes uh, a market that can be a lot more realistic. Everybody's you know, asking though, for the moon yeah, now. Yeah, I know, but I feel like everyone's still in right now. Like, you'll, you're going to find teams are going to drop out over the next yep. two weeks. Like, if they're bad enough over the next little bit, you may not oh, have as I many think, suitors. I don't know. Like, like a team like Calgary, you just have to – you've already made up the decision when you traded Lindholm. Yeah, no, they've made the decision. Yeah. I just mean in terms of potential trade partners for some of these guys, like – Nashville, know, could Detroit, or the Islanders be done by then? Detroit's on a tear, by the way. Detroit so will bad not. Example. No. Detroit, by the way, did you see the goal in overtime last night? Dylan Larkin setting up Patty Kane in yeah. the slot. Mm. Holy, yeah, that was... Larkin's underrated. Detroit's interesting. They won three yeah. in a row. He's there. a good player. No, he's yeah. he is underrated though. Like I feel like he. Yeah. Uh, okay, Phil on the four hundred one. Could a Nazem Kadri return to the Leafs ever happen? I mean. I like Naz as a guy a lot and as a player, but I have no interest yeah. in that contract if I'm the Leafs. I hear I hear uh they still want him and they think that they can even have him in the lineup in a new building. Kadri. Yeah. I mean his contract's certainly long enough. It's still twenty twenty nine. So yeah, there's yeah. the only way he can end up anywhere else, like a Toronto or a Colorado is if they eat a big portion of that yeah. seven. He and makes a half. Se- no seven. He makes seven, seven. a year for yeah. five, six yeah. seasons if you include this one. Colorado would take him back in a heartbeat, but they'd have to we need retention. They'd have to have a a, a number 
thirty percent, thirty five percent. He's having a better year than last year. He's got twenty already this year, only a twenty four, fifty points in fifty seven yeah. games. So he's. I don't he's think Kadri's going anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you might need to, might need to do some homework for this one, uh, Borny. Yep. Off topic, but this is because it's for me. Yeah. Off topic, but what do you guys think is the best logo in the OHL? <laughs> and if we could get a zoom over on my uh, beautiful so jersey I, over there. I have always liked the Brampton Battalion. Are they still around? They are. I think they're now the the North Bay, uh, the North Bay Battalion. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can see right behind Borny's head there is my favorite. <laughs> this is just a self-serving one. <laughs> I just can't believe the Sudbury Wolves is allowed to continue with just random blood off the fangs of a child's drawing of a wolf. Yeah, That's I, fascinating. I, to me. I'll give that, you know, Owen Sounds is the best. They, but they're no. missing blood. Oh, Owen Sounds missing blood? Yeah. Off the bear? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Random blood splatter yes. flying off the fangs. I think, if I'm going to be honest, I love Owen Sounds, clearly, but the Sioux Greyhounds. I have a lot of Sioux. It's, it's, it, I, I love their okay. program there. I respect 67. their program. All right, Sammy. Bring, bring our show back up. Oh, to, come on. Bring our show back up to the big leagues. Will okay, you please? Come on. Jeez, it's the best development league in the world. And they're going to ruin it because they have to pay the players now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to read that one. Just going through here. All right. Kadri mm, would have been such a better uh, fit for this team than Tavares would have been in retrospect, says somebody. So it's just a quick one to get to my next. And cheaper. I agree. You guys talk way too much Leafs. There are other teams in Canada. Yeah, Sammy, that's all your fault. You, you also avoid anything about the Jets with a passion. I find that quite offensive. Because we have Sean and Ken on at least once a month to talk about yeah. the Jets. We do lots of Jets. That's rude. Yeah. Well, no, hey, listen, we make an effort. We hey, check it off each each this, week. This is a damn good team, and like, there's a lot of empty seats in the top of the building there. Yeah, why don't you? Yeah, get that's your offensive own, too. Get your friends out to the game. Don't worry yeah. about what we're Buy talking a ticket. about. By the Support way, your team. The uh, you know, and part of it too is the top end of their lineup. Like they're a good team. It's tougher to be like you know superstars are doing this or they're in drama. They just kind of play well as a team. It's great. They're a very good team. They need Tanov. Yeah. They need a little to defensive kinda, stopper back there. They, they need to reshuffle that blue line just a tad. I think Nick Ehlers should get more playing time and more love. I like Kyle Connor. Do, do you, uh, should the Oilers be targeting a goalie at the deadline or do you think they can ride it out with Skinner? And uh, God, that's the, that is a big time decision here no, skinner's been great and uh, he's, he's tailed off a little bit it's just what are you gonna you're gonna go add markstrom at that no, cost you're, you're gonna not. go add I, I, soros soros not george soros uh or i don't know soros? i don't know what they do that's they're not that's gonna do a hard anything. one they're not gonna do anything there's no chance they trade for a goalie they need they need a 1b calvin pickard's not no, doing it for no. you no what about Campbell? So after like no. going to mm, no, that no, didn't go well. <laughs> they need that pitch to they not need, land. In all honesty, they need a, a Jonathan Quick. You they need what? like someone that has a little bit of pedigree. Yeah, like I, in the playoffs. Listen, we hated Martin Jones's goals last night, but that guy somewhere in the league to yeah. come to Edmonton. Don't you think? He'd be available. Like the Leafs are probably going to waive him when well, Joe Wool uh, comes back. Wouldn't Edmonton say, "Well, we'll take him for sure"? As yeah, but he needs to play. He needs to like let in tougher goals than last I night. I wonder if the Leafs could trade him. You know, say like if there's a couple of teams looking for a one B and say, "Hey, we'll take a seventh for him." The other factor is is I'm telling you, Matt Murray is going to be available in the playoffs. What in 2026? Uh, this season, he's available. Playoffs, Matt Murray. Matt Murray will be healthy and good to go. The guy who plays in Dallas? That guy? <laughs> Different Matt Murray. The one that won the Stanley Cup. Oh, wow. Yeah, in Pittsburgh. I just, Kip, you could yeah. not do that. You couldn't take that risk. He hasn't played hockey. No, no. He'd be he uh, Joseph Walls, Samsonov, and then Matt Murray would be your third goalie. You know about the Leafs this season? Yes. Hello, McFly. Well, buddy... I don't, I'm trying to make sense of Matt Murray playing for a playoff team this year. He hasn't done hockey. No, no. I'm saying that, he, yeah. th that he'd be you the third get goalie. Jones get rid of Jones, and then Matt Murray's yeah. your third. Yeah. I'm okay. not suggesting that Edmonton's going to get Matt Murray. Right. I Although, see. Okay, 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 okay. it would be a huge gamble, but 
If it's free, I, I would try it. The guy feels great. Okay. He's got new hips. New he, hips. He's young. New hips. He's young. He wants to play. <laughs> he's young with new hips. Who could say no? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's fascinating. I'm interested in that. I'd like to see how he yeah. does in the American League for a bit. What if the Edmonton Oilers took a look at Mark andre Fleury? I could see that. I like that. Yeah. That's, like that. the, that's the guy I'm talking about. There's that is, backup for them. That's the backup. Now you need Flurry to okay that, apparently, but... I don't know. He's starting to show up on every team now. He so is, yeah. <laughs> just go through the rotation. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not sure if he actually wrote about this, so I'm just taking it from a texter's word of mouth. Elliot Friedman wrote that the Bruins would be willing to move Linus Allmark. Is he your 1B uh, you keep talking about? 1B? Yeah. Oh, who's A? Yeah, well, I guess it's just in general about the... He won the Vezina Trophy yeah, last year. It doesn't who's matter. He beat they, they, can't, they can't just keep... Uh, him and Swayman just can't keep going. No, and, no I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. like, if you trade him to any team, he's the starter. Yeah. He won the literal Vezina last year. Yeah, I know. I get it. Yeah. I get it, but that's... That's a big, bold move for Edmonton. I would look at it for sure. I, but I don't know what the cost would be. Yeah. I don't know. Like, is... A second round pick, a first round pick. I think he makes five mil, right? Yeah, I'm not even sure they can fit it in. Yeah, five mil this year and next. That's reasonable. Trey Reasonabla. That's Jack Campbell money. Wow, that's just that's a bad Jack Campbell mistake right now. If he doesn't come back, yeah, that will always be a really tough. But he's been good in the American League. I haven't checked in on the old Bakersfield yeah, Condors yeah, yeah, recently, I feel like but they just can't justify just, the increase in salary of calling no, them up. No. All right, boys, that's it for uh, Text Line Friday. Thank you to everyone who texted in. Thank you for the Marner and Crosby question. Yeah. Really, really got us thinking. That's the most we've probably done. For text? Yes. Oh, yeah. Because you always, you see a squirrel and then you, Yeah, because then we're off topic again. This sort of stuff is always, uh, you know, less interesting. But Cody Hodgson scored his first pro goal in eight years in Milwaukee's win. Cool. That's really You know, I was cool. skating with Cody. When? Like October, November. You didn't call every, tree living? Every Thursday morning at North Toronto. I, I was his left winger. Why don't you ever tell us anything? I was his left winger. <laughs> well, then why aren't you playing for the Milwaukee Admirals, <laughs> yeah. bud? So I got him how'd ready. He how'd he look? Uh, he, 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 he spent the last, I think, uh, Six weeks getting in tremendous shape. Yeah, and he wasn't yeah. there yet. So he, he was. Listen, you could see he's like a really good hockey player. Yeah, really fascinating. Yeah, I mean, player. I hope he gets a, another shot in the NHL and yeah. scores himself another National yeah, he, Hockey League goal. That would we'll, be we'll really get him cool. on the show. That'd be great. We'll get him. We'll get him to yeah, just text your left winger and away you go. I'm gonna remind him every day now. Yeah, I got you back you into from. pro hockey. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great story, though. That doesn't happen. How long was he out? When was the last time he eight played? Eight years. That's crazy. And he came out as, like, a top guy. He was yeah. the killer at the World Juniors and came up and crazy. You should try that. Uh, well, stop our, broadcasting our for eight years <laughs> and then come back on the show and our we'll see how you team, do. The Winnipeg Jets plays tonight against the Chicago Blackhawks, Oilers, and the Wild play, and then two other teams, Buffalo Columbus. If I stop broadcasting for eight years... You'll all be, I'll be, <laughs> will be an assistant golf pro. I'll be delivering your pizza or serving you your beer at the beer store, bud. Our thanks to uh, Joshua Cloak from The Athletic in our first hour. And as always, driving it right into a ditch, Doug McClain. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. And if you get a chance, give us a rating and review. Love to hear from you. Our thanks to all our YouTube followers as well. Have a great weekend, everybody. And we're back Monday on The Real Kipper and Born Show.